Hi everybody, welcome back to Rambling Rose Farmhouse. I'm Missy and I'm really glad to have you here today. So today it is still pretty hot here in the south. It's feeling a little bit like fall. We've had some cooler mornings and some cooler evenings, but basically it's still hot. So if we want to get into the fall spirit, we have to kind of create that for ourselves. And so that's what I'm working on today. I am working on making some fall decorations and I just thought you might be interested in joining me for that. Um, also this week, I went to the grocery store and I found this beautiful fall mom and I brought it home and it really started getting me into the spirit and getting me to want to get started um, making my home just more fallish. So I, re I really love the fall. It's one of my favorite seasons. I love to decorate um, my house for fall. And I think it's because, you know, it just gets so hot during the summer here that um, by this time of the year, we're ready for a little bit of relief. We're ready for a little bit of cooler weather. And so um, by decorating for fall, it just kind of, um, I guess it just like makes me know that you know, cooler weather's coming, and so um, it just makes me feel happy. So anyway, last year I did another fall craft, which was um, the copper leaf pumpkins, and so I will leave a card for that video if you're interested in watching it. It was another really fun craft, and pretty easy, and not really expensive, and that's how this one is too, very inexpensive and easy to do. So I always see um, the pumpkins that people are making that are crocheted and that are knitted and I love them. I think they're so cute. They're all different colors and you know all different sizes, but um, my crochet skills are pretty um, limited on what I can do. And so I can't crochet a pumpkin and I don't know how to knit, so I can't knit a pumpkin, but I can buy a sweater and make some little pumpkins um, that have the same kind of look. So I think that's really, you know, neat and um, just wanted to give it a try. So these are some of the ones that I have made already from a sweater that I got from the Goodwill. I actually got two of them. I got an orange sweater and here's a big one. I got an orange sweater and then I got another white one and so I've made these pumpkins from the orange one. Um, the three small ones were made out of the arm and then I used the whole body of the sweater to make this big pumpkin. So the one I'm going to work on um, today with you is this white sweater that I got and I think that I can get a lot out of this one because it's got really long sleeves and then, you know, the body of the sweater, and then it's got this collar. And I think this collar itself will make a nice pumpkin. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to try to make a few different sizes and um, just show you, you know, how I make them and then how they turn out. But um, yeah, so a lot of pumpkins will be out of my, made out of this sweater. So let me just kind of tell you what you'll need in order to do this. Um, this is a sewing project, but it's just sewing by hand and it's not that complicated. So I use some quilting thread. This is hand quilting thread. It's stronger than regular thread and so it holds better. And this just a needle to use with that one, kind of a bigger needle. And then to put the uh, ridges in my pumpkins, I used these big needles. These are upholstery needles and there's all different sizes. There's actually the smaller one is out and then I used the really big one um, when I did the big pumpkin. But you can get these online and you can get them at Hobby Lobby and they're just a set of upholstery needles. And then of course you'll need scissors, a glue gun, um, leaves. If you want to put some leaves on them you can just use some kind of a little branch for your leaves. And um, I think that's all. I did use this um, hemp cord on these little pumpkins for the little um, indentions. 
And then on this one, I used some orange um, embroidery thread that I had because I didn't have any regular um, thread that was that color. So I think that's all that you need. And I'm going to go ahead and get started and show you how to do it. Oh, one more thing you do need. You will need um, some fiber bill. And this was some that I already had. Um, so really, all of this was stuff that I already had except for the sweater that I bought at the Goodwill. Okay, this is the sweater that I'm going to be using. And I think that um, the first thing I'm going to do is maybe cut this neck part off and try it. I've never made one like this before, but I think I'm going to give it a try. So, I'm just going to see what the best way to cut this is. Just going to kind of cut right along this edge. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's very forgiving. Okay, let me go ahead and straighten this up. Now what I'm going to do with my thread, <clears throat> and this is inside out because there's the little seam, is I'm just going to start right here and just go in and out. Real simple, nothing too complicated. Just in and out. Okay, so I overlapped on the side just a tiny bit. See, here's my knot where I started and here's where I came out. And now I'm just going to pull this in as tight as I can. And now when I get it pulled in, I am going to make another knot in my thread right here. And now I'm just going to wrap this around a couple of times just to keep it real good and tight. And then when I get back to this edge, I'm just gonna catch the fabric so that I can make another knot right here.
All right, so that side is done. So that is the bottom, my little pumpkin. And now I'm gonna grab my fiber gel and fill up my pumpkin. Now, I'm not putting any rice or beans or anything like that in this pumpkin because I wanna be able to throw these pumpkins in my bin with my fall decorations. And I don't wanna to have to worry about having something in here that might attract bugs or other type critters. So I'm just gonna fill it with polyfill and I think it will be fine. That's what I did on the other ones. So you just kind of have to decide about how much you want in there and you may have to add more when you get um, the top done. So the top is gonna be the exact same way. I still have thread left on my needle, so I'm just tying a new knot and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just gonna start on one side and just do that in and out stitch. It's just a running stitch, just in and out. I hope you can see this good. Okay, and so that is how it is. Let's see if I need a little bit more. I think I am gonna need a little more fiber fill in there. Just kind of shape your pumpkin, fill it up, shape it, kind of get it as full as you want it to be. Then I'm gonna pull this as tight as I can get it, which is gonna be just about perfect for a little stem to fit in there. And then again, I'm gonna catch the fabric with thread so that I can make a knot and it will stay. All right. So, I don't have enough thread on here left. Cut that off. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the same quilting thread that I'm using since it's white and my pumpkin's white to try to make my little um, sections in my pumpkin. So I just cut another longer piece and I'm going to do the same thing. Oh, I need to get my bigger needle though. That's what I need to do going to change to this um, it's actually the shortest upholstery needle but it's much much bigger than the needle that I was just using and this is the one that I'm going to use to make the um, the ridges or the grooves in the pumpkin lost the other end of my thread I've got my knot Hopefully that'll catch when I get to the bottom. 
and I'm just going to go right in through the center of my pumpkin. Now I'm going to work this needle, twisting it as it goes through the fiber fill because if I don't, it, it, it can be really hard to get it through there. But if you work it through there like that, it is not, oh, and look, that didn't work. Okay, plan two. I'm going to start at the bottom and I'm going to catch right down here in one of these little sections of my pumpkin. I'm going to, now there's my needle. It stopped right here, so I'm going to go back through the fabric with the needle again so that I can make a knot here and it will catch that knot and not let it go through. So let's see. Okay, I'm gonna put the thread around the needle. And then when I pull it, it's gonna make a knot. Okay, now I can cut this long end off. And now it's attached, it won't come out. So now I'm gonna do the opposite of what I did a minute ago. I'm gonna go in through the center, this little center hole, and the same thing. I'm just gonna kind of work the needle through there. Now, be really careful. You don't want the needle to stab you when it comes out the other side. So you need to be careful. This needle is really, really sharp. And then just pick a spot, any spot, and lay your thread down along there, and then go back up through. And you see, when you pull it, it gives you that little bit of an indention and a shape on your pumpkin. So on these, with this ribbed fabric, you really need to lay it along a rib so that it'll look natural. back through and pull that one. Pull it tight as you go and keep it tight. Hopefully I have enough thread for one more, but it's not looking real promising. Let's see if I can get this through here. Barely, because I don't have a way to tie it off. When you don't have a way to tie it off, you're gonna make a way. So I'm threading this little needle, and what I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to sew this through here. I sew it right through that little that little part that's in here and try to tie a knot with this thread. Okay, so this is not the way to do it, <laughs> but if you happen to end up with a little problem like this, I just added this other thread and tied the one coming through off to it. So hopefully it will hold it in place. And now I'm gonna cut this one off, cut this off, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be done. I'm gonna put a little spot of hot glue right there where I just tied that off. And I'm gonna grab me a stem. So one of the things that I didn't tell you you would need would be some stems. And I just cut some little pieces of wood 
for my stems. I'm gonna put this one like right there. So here is the little pumpkin made out of the neck of the sweater, and I really like the way it turned out. Now I may put some leaves on these white pumpkins, but I don't want to put these colorful ones that I have, although they would look fine. I might end up putting those. I think I'd like to try to find just like some either green or brown. Um, or even white, just something to keep these more neutral. But they are pretty, like this too. So, that would be a good idea to change them out. You could use them just like this for a really neutral decor. And then another year, if you wanted to have um, more of the fall colors, you could add some of these fall colored leaves to these white pumpkins, and then they would coordinate really nicely too with your orange ones so for now I'm gonna leave my white ones neutral but anyway so there is the first the first one with the neck now let's go ahead and cut another piece here and I am gonna cut off this little rib part so this little orange pumpkin that I made right here was made with this part of the orange sweater and so it's it's tiny but it's also ripped which is going to be real similar to this one so I probably will make one out of that but right now I think I'm going to cut a piece of the sleeve and make one out of this part. So I'm just gonna, I'm not measuring, I'm just kind of eyeballing it and cutting it about the size I think I want it to be. So now we are going back to the smaller needle and the thread. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use the wider part for the bottom and the narrower part for the top, my little pumpkin. I'm gonna turn this inside out and then I'm going to start doing my running stitch right along this bottom edge. The sweater material does fray and you can use a product like this spray check along the edge if you want to, to keep it from fraying. But so far I haven't had too many problems with it. Once they're made, it shouldn't be a problem. If you want them to be washable, then you might want to um, put fray check on them or if you have a serger, you could run the serger around them and that would be good. So just do your little run stitch all the way around this bottom edge.
Now I'm going to overlap where I started and then pull this all in here tight. And all these little bitty ones, I don't really know if it's necessary to wrap it around there. I probably will just because I have enough thread to do that. So I'm going to wrap it around a couple of times and then come right here. to add a little fiber fill in here. So you could leave it just like this. You don't have to put the little um, indentions in it, but I like the pumpkin to have a little bit more shape like this one does, instead of just being round like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some in this one, but I'm gonna. different texture um, from the different parts of the sweater we can hear it okay so I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut a bigger piece and show you how to make um, a pumpkin out of these bigger pieces so I'm gonna go ahead and use this piece this is gonna be a little bit different that's why I wanted to go ahead and show you kind of some of the issues you run into. Now, if you have a sewing machine, you could cut this in half and make two pumpkins like this one and this one, which would be a really good size. This one like this, I'm not really sure how well this is gonna turn out because it's gonna be real squatty, but I guess we'll do it and see how it looks. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to fix this little hole that's going to be too big for the stem. Let me find a good stem. That looks like a pretty good stem. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put some hot glue on him. And stick him right in the center. And then I'm gonna go back to my small needle and thread. And I am just going to close this up around the stem with thread. So I'm just going to start stitching it together to pull it together on the sides. Okay, so that's how you close that big hole up. It's not very pretty, but this one will need a couple of leaves right there to cover that up. That's what I did right here on this one. I covered where I had to gather those stitching up with the little leaves. And so you can see that if they were there, you wouldn't see it at all. But I'm not gonna put these on because I really wanna try to find some more neutral ones for my white pumpkins. But here we have three different sizes and you can see there's still a lot of sweater left. So I think I'm gonna have to show you another video of how many um, pumpkins I can actually get out of this one sweater. So, I think we'll go ahead and make this tiny one, and then we'll have a lot of different sizes here to show you. so much for joining me here today. I hope that you enjoyed this little craft and that you'll give it a try. And if you do, please leave a comment and let me know um, what you thought about it and how yours turned out. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and be sure and hit the little bell so that you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video and you won't miss any of them. And again, thank you for being here and I hope to see you back again next week.